was a great talk. What we're going to do now is uh, have a Q&A session for all three speakers for about 10 minutes till 10.15. And I'm going to do my best to work with Pigeon here and ask the questions that have the most votes. So you still have a couple seconds to vote on questions. I will try to ask the question for each speaker. And um, if your question isn't asked, remember that you can ask it of the speaker via the chat room over the course of the day. Okay, so the first question is for Talia. And um, it is, is there a difference between people who end up strongly disagreeing versus those who agree? It's a great question. The, the short answer is we don't know, but we assume there must be. Um, in the task that we, our very first conversation ta study that I showed you, the task explicitly was to come to a consensus, to come to an agreement over what the clips were about. And so, um, and all groups did that. So what we haven't seen yet is what happens when people sort of dig their heels in and disagree, what happens in conflict situations, what happens when people are across an ideological divide. And that's a really important question and something that we are turning to now, but we don't have the answer. Great, thank you, Talia. Okay, the next question is for Sabine. Are there implications of your results for how we can shape individual behavior and interactions to produce a more optimal collective output? So a lot of what we do uh, with artificial evolution uh, has to do with figuring out that fitness, that collective performance that we put in the system and then let the automatic, automatic system run so that we can figure out what the local interactions are that would give us an optimal behavior at the global scale. So that works fine when you're in simulation purely. Uh, one of the challenges we have as we start to put this optimization process on the actual robots is that we no longer have a godly view. So we can't measure this global performance, which is what we want to optimize against. And as a result, we're trying to find more creative ways of locally figuring out if a robot or a controller is doing a good job. Uh, so that's, that's the holy grail, figuring out the local interactions that give us an optimal or good enough, depending on what you're trying to do, global behavior. Okay, thank you. Uh, for Guy, we have a question. How do you quantify the collective coordination of the school? And by that, the, the question asker means when schools become uncoordinated, does this mean they split into separate groups? Yeah, we, <clears throat> we have different measures uh, to, to characterize the collective behavior. Uh, at least five, five quantification, basically the, the synchronization, the polarization, the distance between the fish, the distance between the fish and, uh, and the wall, the, the angular orientation, the, the counter milling. I mean, when the, the fish are milling, we have developed also some uh, other uh, uh, quantifiers. And I, uh, if, if you are more interested, I, you, you, can, <laughs> you can read the, the papers. And of course, uh, in some of the, uh, <clears throat> in some of the cases, we do observe uh, some splitting. But it was really interesting, uh, especially when the when the the fish interact only with their uh, their first nearest neighbor. But if a fish if fish only interacts with the, one of the, of the neighbors that has the largest influence on their behavior, uh, we can see that even if fish only interact with just just one neighbor, the schools doesn't split. So and th th that was a real surprise for us. Okay, thank you, Guy. Uh, we have another question for Talia, and, uh, and I think there's also, based on the chat discussion, maybe a comment that Anita might want to make. So feel free after Talia answers Anita to make a remark if you'd like to do that. The question is, what are the implications for collective intelligence um, should, of your results, Talia? Should CI teams not be composed of friends because of their, resp their responses to information are correlated? Yes, uh, I saw this question. Um, our study looked at diversity in terms of centrality in a group and not friendship, although we have that information so we can look at it. And I think it's a great question. And I'm not, uh, my background actually isn't social network analysis. Um, and I'm not sure, maybe someone um, who's listening knows whether friendship, whether centrality clusters in, fr in friendship patterns. But what we found is that the diversity of centrality helps the groups, particularly if you have like a highly central member and not so many other highly central members, like one highly central member can really sort of rally a group, coalesce a group. Um, and so diversity and centrality was really helpful. And 
I would presume, I share the intuition that diversity in terms of people's different backgrounds, having different uh, inputs is really important for collective intelligence. So I, I would guess that the answer is yes, you don't want to constantly be, you know, in your same clique of friends. Um, but I don't have a strong empirical answer on that. Anita, did you want to make a remark or not? Are you there? Okay, let's move on to another question. Um, let's see. So uh, here's a question. Are the fish, this is for Guy, are the fish affected by reflections of themselves? Do the fish see, um, fish they see in the mirrored surface of the back of the tank, for example? I don't understand the question. I mean, uh, the person you... wants to, to know if the fish are affected by their own reflections. By their own ref re reflection. In fact, we didn't really test that. Uh, and uh, yes, probably because <clears throat> Um, I know that there exists some, um, now we can uh, perform experiments with virtual environment where we can put uh, a, a virtual image of a fish and we know that fish interact with, uh, with, uh, with virtual fish. So maybe we can probably uh, change the, the, the picture of the, of the fish which is pro pro projected on the, on the virtual screen and probably a fish can react to its own uh, to its own image but the, the the problem is that all fish closely re resemble to, to each other so there is i mean there is no not really no 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 real difference between the between the fish regarding the their shape and their and their color at least uh, in the species that we have studied okay thank you guy um we have another question for talia uh, that is, how might the results of the conversation study apply to digital conversations? Could this be a driver for the echo chamber effect that we observe in social media? Yes. I mean, I think it has to be the case that uh, when like minds get together and, uh, and just uh, form a kind of a closed constrained group um, that you're just, and you're not gonna get diverse inputs that of course that's going to be, that's going to lead to echo chambers. And maybe um, I think one question that I raised in the talk was, you know, do we, do we just naturally befriend people who are like us? I think probably the answer to that is yes as well. And we're studying, we're studying that now by uh, last year, actually, as the new cohort of MBA students arrived, we took them off the bus, basically put them in a scanner, showed them the videos before they'd even met each other, and then waited several months to collect their social network data to see whether or not we could predict who would become friends based on their initial brain activity. Um, we're just now analyzing those results. So I don't know the answer and I'm, my hope is that it's not a strong effect, right? That we just kind of find people who think like us and we kind of just hunker down and we don't add new inputs in. But that is definitely the, the worry that we can, um, either we come to these groups because we, are, we, we think the same way or just by virtue of shared experience, we come to view the world in exactly the same way without increasingly finding avenues for diversity, we're going to create these echo chambers naturally. Great. Thank you, Talia. I think we're going to stop here. So thank you.